What makes this game so interesting? What gives it so much staying power after hundreds and thousands of hours and decades of popularity? In a word, freedom. Few other games allow you to engage only with the parts you want, how you want, and on what timeline you want. And it's this freedom that allows trophy accounts to play the game in a way that's entirely different from anything else. This is why series like Swampletics and Extreme One Chunk have so much popularity. I've wanted to play around with trophy account restrictions for a while, but I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do. And then it came to me. Maybe not the most difficult challenge, or even the most original, but it's something I thought was cool even back in the 07 days. The Untrimmed Slayer Cape. Not only is it one of the longest 99s, but it can be pretty difficult to get it as your first 99 because training it traditionally trains an extra 5 skills at the same time. Plus, it just looks cool. I mean, it's all black, look at it. But with that in mind, I created a fresh Iron Man account, meaning I can't trade with other players and I can't use the GE. And without further ado, let's begin the journey. Fresh off of Tutorial Island. Wait a second, this isn't Lumbridge. This is Cataphys, and we're doing the rooftop course already? How many stats do we have? There's something fishy going on here. Well, let me explain. I actually created this account a year ago with the intent of creating the series that you see right now. And after putting in several hours, I took a break and later ended up losing all of the footage. So I just dropped the account and didn't touch it for a long time. But I decided this was a series I still want to make. So here we are, back at it again. And while we're just training our agility here, let me catch everybody up on what's done on this account so far. The first thing I did was complete X marks the spot and client of Karend. While these quests are important for unlocking a whole extra continent, my goal with doing these first was actually to use the XP lambs on agility, getting me up to level 10 right away. This lets me access the Draenor rooftop agility chorus immediately. There's going to be a lot of travel on this account. So getting agility levels early to increase run regen and unlock the graceful set, which will make my run last a lot longer and lower my equip load, is going to be priority number one. And being able to run more often is going to be really important for an early game grind that I plan to do. So after getting 20 agility at the Draenor rooftop course, I ran over to Alcarid and got 30 agility on that rooftop course, and then ran over to Varrock and got 40 agility on that rooftop course. After getting 40 agility comes the first meaningful grind, unlocking protection prayers. Many RuneScape players say the game doesn't even begin until you unlock protection prayers, and I'm inclined to agree. They unlock so much content and make doing so many things so much easier that it's hard to imagine the game without them. If you're unaware, there's three of them, and they're unlocked at levels 37, 40, and 43. These are Protect from Magic, Protect from Range, and Protect from Melee. And together, they can grant immunity to all three styles of combat. But how do we train prayer on an Iron Man when you can't buy bones and you have no access to normal prayer training methods like the Gilded Altar in a player-owned house, and especially on an account like this one that needs to stay away from as much combat as possible to achieve 99 Slayer before any other skill. Well, there's a method, but it's not very fun. In the wilderness, there's an area known as the Boneyard that has several spawns of big bones, which give three times the experience of normal bone. Also in the wilderness, far to the west from the Boneyard, is the Chaos Altar, the Chaos Altar effectively multiplies the prayer speed that each bone gives by 700%. And so, after hours of running back and forth from the boneyard collecting bones to the Chaos Altar and sacrificing them, I got 43 prayer, unlocking the protection prayers, which are going to be key to this account. Next is some questing. I mentioned before that getting full graceful is going to be the first big goal on this account, and that goal is still in effect. For that, I'm going to need to unlock Mauritania, which gives me access to the Canopus Rooftop Agility Course, which has one of the highest drop rates for Marks of Grace, which I can then turn in for pieces of the Graceful set. On the way, though, we're going to start a bunch of quests that are going to become important later on. Cook's Assistant, Sheep Shearer, Mistalin Mystery, Restless Ghost, Witch's Potion, and Romeo and Juliet are first. None of these quests are super important on their own, but some of them are prerequisites for later quests, and they can give some nice early experience and money. 
Next we have Gertrude's Cat, which unlocks the ability to have a pet cat. The Daddy's Home mini quest, which gives us some early construction levels, our player owned house, and some supplies. The Varak Museum Natural History Quiz, which boosts us up to level 9 Hunter and Slayer. Rune Mysteries to unlock rune crafting. Tree Gnome Village for some attack XP and access to spirit trees. Monk's Friend for some early woodcutting experience. Azil Cult for some early thieving experience. Then Plague City and Biohazard, which are both prerequisites for a very important quest line that we'll be finishing later, as well as giving some early mining experience and some more thieving experience. Fight Arena is up next, and that gives some extra attack XP. Then Clock Tower and Sheep Herder, which don't really matter, but they're good to get out of the way. After that, Dwarf Cannon, which will be incredibly important, giving us access to the cannon, and Waterfall Quest, giving us a huge boost to both attack and strength XP. Murder Mystery, Merlin's Crystal, and Holy Grail are up next, and while the first two don't give a whole lot, Holy Grail gives a bunch of prayer and defense experience. Juretic Ritual to unlock Herblore, Low Ice Mountain for the Flex, Black Knight's Fortress for access to Recruitment Drive, Recruitment Drive for a bunch of XP and some early armor, once I can afford it. Observatory Quest is next for no particular reason, but I need to go there to pick up an anti-poison spawn that's nearby, so I might as well complete the quest while I'm there. And then finally, to access Canifus, Priest in Peril. Also, somewhere along the line I started Alfred Grimhand's Bar Crawl, Vampire Slayer, and Nature Spirit, but I haven't finished any of those yet. And aside from quests, I completed the Ardune Easy Diary, which gives me access to some much needed teleportation. So now that you're all caught up, let's finish this agility grind, shall we? Starting off with 50 agility, 51, 52, 53 agility, 54 agility, 55! Uh, I don't know what happened to 56, so... 57! And that's 58 agility. 59. And 60. Although I don't quite have enough marks of grace for a full graceful yet, so we're gonna finish that off at the Sears Village. Ah, Sears Village. I remember spending hours here chopping maple trees in my youth. It's nice to get a change of scenery after spending so much time in Canopus. So dark and dreary. But you don't need to see me get those last five marks of grace. I'll catch all of you in Birthorp once I've gotten them. And here it is, the fruits of our labors. Come on, Grace, give me that full graceful. One of every piece, and... There it is. God, that feels good. Getting graceful is such a huge step in any account. I apparently already have the graceful gloves. I guess I didn't remember everything that I did on this account a year ago. But, with that big goal out of the way, it's time to move on to phase two of the plan. And that is, like any good Iron Man, prepping for the Winter Todd. To start with, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the Bar Crawl, Vampire Slayer, and Pirate's Treasure. Considering I apparently already started them, might as well get them greened. Bar Crawl first, and apparently, even though I started this quest a year ago, my character is still drunk today. Must be some potent stuff. And while we're at it, we're gonna tell him to teach us how to smash our vials after we drink them, because no one wants that stuff in their inventory. Next, the spooky vampire slayer. Which, I brought food for... for some reason. Even though I have protection prayers. But oh well, a little bit of attack XP never hurt anybody. And finally, the easiest of the bunch, Pirate's Treasure, finished off by defacing some poor gardener's garden. And that'll be all for this episode. Next episode, we're going to be getting our fire making level up, completing a few more quests, and starting the Temporis grind that we have to do before Wintertod. If you have any feedback on this series, I would love to hear it. Questions, comments, suggestions, all the above. Like the video if you think it was cool, and subscribe if you want more content. And as always, I hope all of you have a wonderful day.